Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing what exactly happened to the NASA's mission to asteroid Psyche that was originally supposed to launch a few months ago from when I'm making this video, but has now been postponed until October of 2023 and could potentially be postponed further. A mission that a lot of us have actually been really looking forward to, and a mission that's going to be super exciting when it actually does happen. And so in this video I wanted to discuss exactly what happened, briefly talk about the fundamental organizational problems NASA has discovered that basically caused this mission to be postponed, and of course briefly talk about what this mission is supposed to be about. And maybe let's start with that. So what exactly is Psyche and why is it so exciting? Well, as you can learn from the website in the description, this will be the first ever mission to the most unusual asteroid in the solar system, 16 Psyche. An asteroid discovered a long time ago, but more recently determined to be almost entirely made out of metal, potentially representing some kind of an ancient core of an object that would become a planet, or potentially representing something entirely different. And because this is essentially the strangest asteroid we have in the solar system, that you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description, naturally NASA wanted to launch a mission here to find out everything we possibly can about this unusual rock. Especially because some of the recent studies started to discover that maybe it's not entirely made out of metal as we thought and might instead be some kind of unusual porous structure very different from what anyone imagined. But the mission was originally supposed to launch a few months ago, actually it was originally supposed to launch around the same time as Artemis 1 back in August of 2022, but because of several major problems this launch had to be scrapped several times. But this mission is too important to just cancel. NASA has determined this mission to be completely irreplaceable, something that NASA has announced several times. But because of these unpredictable problems and because of the cancellation of the original launch, along with the fact that some of these problems started to actually seep into other missions, NASA decided to take a really drastic step, something that I'm honestly really impressed they managed to do, and something that I think no other company, no other organization in the world would ever be able to do as well as NASA did. Which is of course probably why it's been rated the best place to work for many years now, including 2022. Okay, I keep saying NASA. Here we're not actually talking about the entire NASA. We are talking about one of the field centers, JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So the research and development center that's basically responsible for most of the well-known missions, such as the missions to Mars, missions to Jupiter, and of course the mission to Psyche. But not James Webb Space Telescope, which is technically part of the Goddard Space Flight Center. So whatever I talk about in this video doesn't affect all of the NASA's missions, but it does affect the ones at JPL. And so basically, when the problem started to arise, JPL took a really drastic step. And no, they didn't start firing people like what you would expect from a typical Fortune 500 companies. I mean, I just recently read that Amazon has fired 18,000 people, which is absolutely insane in my opinion, and they did not start to cut funding. Instead, they spent some money to hire an actual independent review board, led by Thomas Young, former NASA administrator, that produced this document you can find in the description. A 60-page report of what's basically wrong with JPL right now, discovering all of the fundamental problems with the organization, discovering some major dysfunction within the company, and more importantly, producing important suggestions that now JPL is actually taking really seriously. And to be honest, I was super impressed that they managed to do this. Basically, it's like bringing someone from the outside to literally criticize everything you do wrong with your company, but moreover, to then actually produce a plan of action that will result in everyone getting better. And I know that this is done all the time in various companies, and especially really big companies, by hiring some kind of a consulting company to go through your finances, with the result usually being relatively similar. Cut your costs, fire anyone who's not needed, and maybe change a few things here and there in order to become more efficient. I mean, that's what's really happening with Amazon right now. But that's not at all what JPL did with their plan of action. Nobody got fired, nobody got reprimanded or punished, and unlike for example what's happening with Twitter and Elon Musk, nothing got sold or removed from the organization at all. Because here JPL realized that their problems were not from, for example, overpaying or from people not doing their job. The problems, just like for example with Twitter, were from overworking, from overload of different missions, and more importantly, from losing staff. So let me just briefly mention the summary from this report and then talk about what JPL was planning to do with all of this. So for example, the initial launch of Psyche had to be cancelled because of a small software issue. An issue that could not be resolved right away, but an issue that could have caused a problem later on. But a much more thorough investigation revealed that fundamentally there was another problem here. The entire mission did not even have a chief engineer. 
and has also experienced a major staff shortage during the development of the mission itself. And even though some of this was due to the pandemic, a lot of it was for a completely different reason. A lot of engineers and a lot of talent from the last few years unfortunately have left for private space companies. And in most cases, it was because of better pay and better benefits at private space companies. And because of the constant loss of talent, and also because of the workers who were working from home, it removed an important part of the organizational structure that has always revolved around social interaction or various drop-in conversations that has always been really important at NASA. And so basically now instead of having co-workers or having some kind of a social cohesion, as described in the report, JPL has now found itself with a lot of cultural erosion. The NASA work culture has started to disappear, weakening the entire institution. And although I know that sounds like I'm basically saying that working from home doesn't work and it should be abandoned by everyone, that's not really the point here. The point is that JPL depended on a very important social structure that completely disappeared within just a few years after the pandemic started and when various private space companies started to basically take away a lot of the staff that has already formed social bonds previously. And so to some extent it's like hiring a bunch of contractors that don't really have any social links and instead are just doing it for the money until they get a better paid opportunity and then move on with their career. And this definitively reflected on what happened with Psyche. Every little error and mistake that occurred during the mission was fundamentally traced back to the lack of cohesion and lack of communication. And more importantly, lack of culture of trust and lack of transparency. Something that has always been present at GPL from the beginning. And so even though in the past, especially during the Martian missions or even before that, during the Apollo missions, whenever there was a potential problem, it would be discovered pretty much right away and would be solved really quickly. In the last few years, it's always become the opposite. You now had to prove that there is a problem. And more importantly, you had to find the right person to communicate to. And so many problems remain unresolved until the last minute, which led to more work stress and created even more pressure. And that's on top of staffing issues and on top of budget issues. But worst of all, all of this became normalized over time and within just a few years, the entire culture at GPL changed completely, eventually leading to the problems with not just Psyche, but an even more exciting mission, Veritas, that's supposed to go to Venus in just three years. Super exciting mission, and you can learn more about it in the description, but even this has now started to face the same problems. And so the constant pressure, the lack of staff, the overworking pressure, and more importantly, more projects than ever before, led to some fundamental issues at GPL that nobody realized they had up until this report. And it's actually really impressive that they didn't just accept it, they're now actively trying to solve all of this this year. Once again, they probably still deserve that title of the best company to work for. Which unfortunately means that this mission had to be postponed. Postponed for at least 8 more years. But as sad as this sounds, they did make the right choice. They basically now are going to reshuffle some of the staff from other missions, putting the priority on the missions that are almost ready to launch. Which means that they're definitely going to try to launch Psyche in October of 2023. And so at least for now, this definitely solves their staffing issue, which at the same time should improve communication culture and of course provide a chief engineer for the entire mission. But it might not solve all of the problems just yet. I mean, obviously, they're still not going to be able to stop people from leaving for private space companies, which is kind of interesting and somewhat ironic because many of them then quit private space companies because of a tremendous amount of professional pressure. So once again, still the best company to work for, probably. But more importantly, they're making extreme changes to the way that everyone communicates, specifically when it comes to reports. Now every single issue is going to be resolved almost immediately and more social cohesion and social interaction will be encouraged in the long term. And they of course are going to be reviewing every major mission planned, including the Europa Clipper and the Sample Return Mars mission that's supposed to pick up the samples from Perseverance and return them back to Earth. And so in some sense, all of these missions are right now in jeopardy, but because of this report, if everything goes well, GPL might actually dramatically improve their functionality and of course get back on track with launching these incredible missions for the next 10 years. And since for 2023, Psyche is really the only mission NASA has planned, it means that they can actually put all of their effort into it and hopefully make it work after all. And obviously following this experience, it's quite possible that some of the other missions could get back on track as well. But if it doesn't happen on October of 2023, because of the orbital dynamics, the next launch window is only going to be in like two years from now. And so this is definitely going to be a really important year for JPL. They're going to have to reorganize everything 
and they're going to have to solve quite a lot of internal structure problems, not because this spacecraft has to be launched and because we want to see Psyche, but actually because so many other missions, more important missions, depend on how all of this works out. If by October of 2023 they're still having troubles and the same issues persist, well, in that case, quite a lot of other missions planned for the next 10 years could be in jeopardy as well. But honestly, based on the report and based on how seriously this was taken so far, I would not be surprised if by October, GPL basically works out everything. Which means that within the next few years, we'll finally get to see what this rock actually looks like. Now this is a picture from the very large telescope, the best picture we have so far, but it doesn't really tell us anything, or even explains what we're looking at. I mean, you can sort of see some craters, but not much else. So anyway, a pretty intriguing self-assessment and self-discovery, on the part of JPL of course, but obviously something that, if they don't improve, is going to jeopardize so many NASA missions in the future. Although personally, I'm pretty sure they're going to work it out, but I guess only time will tell how all of this goes. You can find this report in the description, but I guess until we see the results from NASA, and until the launch of the mission, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. You can learn more about the mission itself in that previous video in the description that also mentions a little bit more about the asteroid and why it's so important to science. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.